Hi, this is Professor Britton, and I am testing out a tool that I'm going to use for presenting lectures to you guys if we have to evacuate because of the storm. So, on that note, I'm going to give you a review of how to draw carbon skeletons, which we talked about in our last lecture before the exam. So, up here on the first diagram, you have simple two carbons, so those are your two points to get you started. I'm going to go with a dark color, then that bright green. Um, and remember, each vertex represents a single carbon atom. So for each point, you can go ahead and have that be your starting reference for it to make sense. The other part is that anywhere you have hydrogens attached to a carbon or attached to nearly anything else, those are all assumed to already be there. You don't have to show the individual carbons. So this first simplest one is just a straight line. You move on to a slightly more complicated molecule. Here we have three carbons. Connect those lines. That doesn't really show us much, which is why we put this at an angle. Here, like this, now showing our three carbons. Remember, too, though, that you do still have the hydrogens there. They're assumed to be there even though you don't draw them. So this carbon here has three hydrogen attached to it. And that's assumed, that's saturated, so it's full of hydrogen. The center carbon has two hydrogen attached, also saturated. And this other one on the end has three as well. Okay. So those are the two most important features with any carbon skeleton. Each carbon atom and then whether or not they're saturated with hydrogen. Slightly more complicated example here with adding in the double bond. We can start with our basics still. We have one, two, three, four carbons. We draw them at an angle like this actually because this is what the real atom, the real molecule ends up looking like. The angles sh are shifted like this to allow extra space for the other atoms, in this case the hydrogen, to fit onto this, the structure. If we connect all of our carbons lines, you know, with that zigzag shape, and then we need to add in our extra important double bond here. It's at the end of the molecule, so it goes here on the end. Now, if you were to mark out and take a look at where all of those hydrogens are again, remember that this first carbon here on the end only has two hydrogens attached to it because it already has the double bond. So it's sharing two electrons here, sharing one with this hydrogen, one with this hydrogen. Okay? So you'd have the same thing here with the second carbon, one, two, three being shared with other carbon atoms, single hydrogen, two hydrogens on this one, one, two, three hydrogens shared on their final carbon. Okay? And then the last couple, one, two, three, four, again, our double bond is in a different place. Still actually have the same number of carbons. These two molecules here on the end are actually isomers of each other. If you add up the number of carbons and hydrogens and write out the formula, they're identical. The double bond is in a different place though. This is actually the simpler version of the same structure, no double bond. So you'll note that if you add up the number of hydrogens, it's different. A little bit more complicated one here with a branched structure. So this, this is a branch off of the main carbon chain, but we still use the same basic principles. Okay, you have line, one, two carbons, and we've added a third carbon here on the end, our fourth carbon, since we've come up. So we end up with this little tripod structure, and each of those is saturated with hydrogen. Okay, so we draw those in the blue again. One, two, three. Remember, you do not need to put these blue dots in here to represent the hydrogens when you draw the carbon skeleton. That's the purpose of this structure, is a nice, neat shorthand so that we don't have to make this, draw as much each time. Okay. These rings, remember these are aromatics. Okay. We often see them in scents, smells. You're actually smelling them all the time. And we do the same thing as far as our carbon atoms. One, two, come down to a third, four, five, six, our sixth one, and we have a bond connecting the last two. And this is actually a nice saturated, sim simple carbon ring. This 
And here on the end, we do the same process. Two, three, four, five, six carbons connected. But since we have double bonds here in place, we need to show those as well. In most organic chemistry uh, textbooks, you'll see the, these double bond lines written on the inside of the ring. I just I drew them on the outside here. Don't forget that that what that does to the number of hydrogen atoms that you actually have shown. Each of these carbons, such as this one here, are already connected to one, two, three other um, locations, so they're sharing three electrons already. That means that we only have one hydrogen attached there. One, one, one. That's why this structure looks so simple even when we draw it out in its full form. Hopefully that will be a good review for you guys and how um, carbon skeletons work. Remember another good thing to practice with this is actually to go through and write out the chemical formula for each of these as well. Have a great day!